If you wanna meet him at the front gate It's your boy Toby D, and you already know what it is. It is pound for pound. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what happened in week one, but hey, it is time to let that go now. And let's prepare for week two with these Carolina Panthers. Listen, it's a lot to be excited about. We got our next five out of six games at home. I don't think y'all understand the magnitude of that. Our next Five out of six games are at home, starting with the Carolina Panthers. Then you got the Saints, you got the Bengals, you got those Tampa Bay Bucks. Now, I already just mentioned three out of those five. You already know going to be division games. And we got to cap it off before we go into week eight by week. The New York Giants coming up in here on a Monday night game where we will not have John Gruden calling the game, of course. Because he's over there with the Oakland Raiders already making bad moves. But I'm not going to get into that. But before we get really into it, this hype train right here that we need to get started for these next five games, I'd have to make this announcement because I know some of you have been asking and inquiring about the intro song I've been using for my podcast. The song is Heaven's Gate. And no, it's not just an intro song. There is an actual whole song that is available for any one of you um, that want it. It's a free download. It's on ReverbNation.com backslash Toby D. Again, that is ReverbNation.com backslash Toby D. Uh, let's get it cracking, man. Hey, tomorrow it gets started. We have got to beat down these Carolina Panthers. And listen, running on this team, despite what you hear Dan Quinn and Steve Sarkeesian saying that we got to be a balanced team, it is not easy. But... 65 yards, if we can get that and be effective with it like we have been, which is a huge reason since after that 38 to nothing drubbing that they gave us in 2015, why we're 4-2 on this team? Just run and get some yards. We need to at least be able to keep in that 65-yard range um, that we've been able to maintain since we played this team under Dan Quinn the six times we have faced him. So let's see how Tevin Coleman does tomorrow. Everyone, of course, you know we all believe in him. This is his last year with us. Unless we're able to make a move and be able to keep him. Thomas Dimitrov, like I mentioned one time before, seems to be confident that we can pay both guys big money and hold on to him. Well, we shall see in the offseason if that shall happen. But I'm definitely excited about these next five games that we have here. The stadium roof is finally working properly the way that it needs to be. And listen, guys, I don't know if you knew this or not, but we went 5-3 and three last season. And it was a quiet 5-3, and three, probably because we lost against teams like the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills in the AFC East. But hey, I, however the case, we did go 5-3, and three, and that gives us some confidence. Now, we're not quite yet back at full steam as far as Falcons fans being able to afford the tickets and and come in and on the PSLs and stuff like that to really fill up the stadium like we did the Georgia Dome but I do believe over time we will get there and to go five and three despite not having full full crowds that says a lot Falcons players now get to sleep in their own bed these next games coming up and that's a lot of games coming up before we ate at your own house now, the question will be, and will remain until the Falcons' offense is able to do it, are they finally going to take flight starting in this game? Or are their plane, is their plane going to stay landed with no fuel to take off? We shall see. This, to me, really is Calvin Ridley's true debut as a Falcon 
since after we drafted him. Now, he didn't get to have any shine. It was Julio Jones Day, clearly, up in Philadelphia. But Steve Sarkeesian did say that he wished he had gotten him more involved, and we shall see, starting against this Carolina Panthers team, if he should be able to outshine the guy that was drafted two spots up before him and DJ Moore, who also didn't get the opportunity to shine during his debut at home against the Cowboys. I'm hoping it's our guy and not theirs that's going to get the chance to shine. Now, Calvin Ridley, of course, too. Yes, it did hurt us, Georgia Bulldog fans, when he caught the game-winning touchdown in this stadium, <laughs> by the way, and they were able to go on and become champs once again. I'm not even calling their name because I don't want to call their name until we get to see them, hopefully in the playoffs again for a rematch to knock them out and not have to meet them in the championship game. But let's keep it on, keep it moving. We know what we got to do. This ain't even about really the Carolina Panthers. This is about us right now joining together on this homestand and having an even better record than what we had last year. Now, I can tell you the tone is set. Steve Sarkeesian got a lot of backlash after what happened with that one and five in the red zone start. Even after all the wrinkles that they talked about, they were adding and helping their red zone offense get better and the power runs that they were going to add in. It's safe to say, like I said, none of that stuff showed up against the Eagles. But now that you have perfect weather conditions, a stadium roof that is working, and possibly more Atlanta Falcons fans coming in this season than you had last season, I expect everything to go well, especially since... Steve Sarkeesian showed some passion during his presser this week before the game, clapping back at Kurt Warner, who made some comments about his criticism of Steve Sarkeesian's play calling down in the red zone. Now we just need Steve Sarkeesian to continue riding that passion momentum and call this game and make us look like an offense that needs to be feared. And not an offense that is watered down and we can't make moves, especially scoring. Matt Ryan is coming in here with one interception and no touchdowns. Julio Jones, 169 yards, no touchdowns. Time to kill all of that and totally wash week one out and let's usher in an offense close to what we had in 2016. Ain't gotta be all the way close, but can we get at least 75% close to it? That's all I'm asking. I feel very confident in this defense, despite the fact we don't have Deion Jones for a little time, hopefully a little time and not the whole season. The Falcons are surely hoping he can come back after eight weeks. And we know Keanu Neal, of course, is not gonna make it back, but I still feel good about what we have and DeMonte Casey, who showed that he can make plays in the preseason, and that continued in week one. I feel confident about Jordan Richards, whom I never really got to see play with the New England Patriots. But if I remember correctly, he is a Super Bowl champ. He's coming in here. And I believe he can represent well behind Keanu Neal. I believe in... I'm just going to say it, Duke Riley. I believe Duke Riley can handle the role that he's being given. I believe that Devontae Campbell is going to be a great help to him, and this gives Devontae Campbell a chance to really shine as well. I don't expect guys to handle all the assignments that, Duke, that you know, excuse me, Deion Jones and Keanu Neal had, but I know that within the scheme, guys are going to have different assignments to handle different matchups in this game. I'm just praying that they're able to handle that. And Ricardo Allen is really able to help everyone stay together despite the two losses in the defense. Mind you, key loss. But I believe that we can handle what is about to go down these next five out of six games. This is huge for us going into week eight because them last nine games is going to be something because we're only going to get three out of them nine at home 
that'll be left to complete our eight games. But I'm not finna stay on here long. I just had to come and share that. I'm about to get off of here right now. This is going to be a short video. Y'all, it's time to rise up. Like I said, the tone has been set. The remix to Welcome to Atlanta has been made for the Falcons. Let's be the first team in NFL history to not only host the Super Bowl, but to play in it. Again, this is Toby D. Shout out to JR, pound for pound. Please comment, continue to share, like, and subscribe if it's in your heart to do it. Peace. I'm out.